Hello, my name is Andy Proctor and I just want to put something out to the Pi community which is my project to connect my truck to the internet so that it can tweet but more importantly email the office my status while I'm out on the road. Uh, the company does have a tracker system but we still have to phone up and say whether we've got our box on or off, when we've been unloaded or loaded at the customer's premises. So this is just my way of uh, learning more about the Pi and using some skills I've got to create a practical application. So here it is, iData Truck. So this is inside the truck, just above the driver's position. Uh, it's above the windscreen. Down on the bottom right is a tachograph unit and then there's two spare panels. So the one on the right is where I've uh, tucked the Pi away and I'm using a cigarette lighter with a USB power source. And then to the left we've got four buttons which are push to make which I've wired up to the board which I'll show you next. Uh, box on, when you get your container put on, when you get your container lifted off or obviously hooked up to a trailer or drop a trailer off. And then loaded and empty when you're at the customers so that the office know that you're leaving and you're away to the next job. Um, this is just four inputs and I'm going to do something next where I'm going to use barcode scanning to give more information. Uh, I've been running it for a week now and it has saved on the phone calls, so that's pretty cool. Um, obviously it can be adapted with the code to suit what needs the office feel that if they're being overloaded with information or they need some more, so hence running it this week and then next week I'm going to program the barcode and then the week after give it a test run. So as you can see it's got the power light and then this LED just shows me that the script is still running and that there's no faults. So if it falls over, it does stop flashing. I've connected um, USB Wi-Fi dongle to the keyboard and mouse. And um, the only problem is I have to connect the monitor each time to change it. Or just pop this cover off and pull the whole unit out. So um, next I'll show you the unit. Take 417. So there's the faceplate that you recognise with the four switches and two LEDs. Wired through to these pins to a ribbon cable and I was connecting these pins directly to the GPIO pins of this which is the Raspberry Pi but they kept falling off and it was very frustrating trying to work out what was going wrong. So I went over to this, uh, got it from Maplin, just plugged straight on and these numbers correspond 1 through to 40 on some of the diagrams that are available so that helped too. Um, the resistors that you need I've managed to put in the heat shrink and solder so that's made it nice and secure and just connected here so I could change any of the uh, combinations of the wires if I needed to but I just finished up again with heat shrink just to make sure they didn't come undone. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is just awesome I mean 25 quid for a fully functioning PC basically. Um, USB keyboard and mouse, internet connection via a USB Wi-Fi through the phone and power comes through this USB power supply onto there. If I want to change the code in any way plug in a monitor to the HDMI port and um, away we go. All the data is on the SD card which is the operating system so I can take that out and plug it into my other one if I just wanted to you know, do a quick amendment and pop it back onto this. I managed to keep the buzzer on a separate flying lead so I could put it wherever I wanted to put it so I could hear it. And again, the little resistor is in there. So yeah, it's fascinating that you can connect up switches and LEDs, even motors to the pins on here and then you know, write code to have an effect and output to Twitter or to email so there's an event log for pretty much all the button presses but then the important stuff that the office need to know is emailed to them. Um, they've said it's handy, I, I don't think it will be rolled out across the fleet but I've really enjoyed doing it. Um, the code is just awesome, learning Python has been really really cool and it is a really good programming language and it does take you back to the 80s and the days of 10 print hello go to 10 so yeah it's been a bit of a throwback to you know messing about on um, Atari 600 XLs and Spectrums and stuff so yeah I've really enjoyed it a uh, bit of soldering a bit of programming and uh, it's a practical application that, that actually works and 
you know, the whole Raspberry Pi Foundation values that, you know, they're teaching young people to code, where there's going to be a shortage of coders coming through is fantastic. And they're going out around the world and, you know, they're talking about millions of pounds now. So that's a really fantastic success. So well done to the Raspberry Pi team in Cambridge. Um, that's about it. If you want to keep up to date with how things are going, have a look at the Twitter feed, which is iDataTruck. Um, when I get the USB version working, I will post that to YouTube also. Thanks very much. Um, I hope this inspires you to <laughs> use one of these plugs. It's a lot easier. Thanks very much.